special family welcome to another video if you're new here hello i'm autism mom and on this channel we talk about autism and everything in between if you like to be part of our family click the subscribe button and please like and share our videos today's topic is titled able account if you've watched my autism and special needs trust video i'll put a card up here so you can check it out you might have done some research and maybe not but if you did do some research you'll realize that uh you'll need a minimum of twenty five hundred dollars to set up that account but let's say you don't have twenty five hundred dollars and you still want to make sure your child is okay that your child will be all right there is a way the able account okay what is an able account able stands for achieving a better life experience so if you were born with a disability or you became disabled before 26 years old, you could be eligible, eligible for an ABLE account. If you go on ablenrc.org or you go into Google and type in ABLE National Resource Center, you can see the states that have the ABLE program. They have a map and once you click on view all state programs, and the states in gray indicate inactive programs. So those states in gray do not have the ABLE program. And those states are Idaho, Utah, South Dakota, North Dakota, Wisconsin, Maine, and Hawaii. If your state has not launched the ABLE program, you can still open an account in most states because most states allow out-of-state residents to open an account. So what you'll need to do is go on the website, use the comparison tool on that website to find a state program open to non-residents and one which is best suited for your program or your needs. So I went to my state program and when I clicked on the website to open the, when I click on the link to open the website, I didn't like the way it looked. It, it didn't look legit to me. I was kind of scared to put money somewhere where it didn't look, it looked a little iffy. So what I did is I went and did some more research and I called up my bank to see if they had an ABLE program and with my bank, investment bank, which is Fidelity. And when I called Fidelity, they said, yeah, they do have an ABLE program because you'll realize not all places have an able program and able programs are not with your regular banks they're they're not a regular bank so when i called fidelity they said they do offer it and since i had my retirement funds and hsa with fidelity i wanted to keep all my funds all my accounts in one place so fidelity said yes they do have it but they're registered to the state of massachusetts but it's the same program they have the same benefits and they're with the states of Massachusetts. So I went ahead and did mine for the state of Massachusetts. Yes, to answer your question, Ramsey has a special needs trust and an ABLE account. But we'll get into that later so you see what the pros and cons are. Okay, so now you found where you wanted to open your ABLE account or what state you can open it with. Then comes the next thing. What are the benefits of an ABLE account? One, tax-free earnings. The earnings you make on your ABLE account are not subject to federal or state income taxes as long as you spend the earnings on qualified disability expenses. Next, you get to keep your public benefits. So one of the primary reasons that the Federal ABLE Act was passed was to protect individuals like Ramsey from losing certain benefits like Medicaid and SSI. So any money that's in that account is safe for Medicaid and SSI. For example, if you have $5,000 in your ABLE account, that $5,000 does not count as an asset when determining your eligibility for SSI or Medicaid. That, so that's a good thing. The next thing, the next um, benefit to an ABLE account is limited impact on SSI benefits. So using an ABLE account will not make you ineligible for SSI. 
If, however, you have more than $100,000 in the account, your SSI benefits may be suspended. Yes, they may be suspended. Okay, here's how it works. For example, um, you have $101,000 in your ABLE account. The Social Security Administration will ignore the first $100,000 because up to $100,000 is safe. They will ignore that $100,000. So I hope you're getting it that you can put up to $100,000 in there. Anything above that is considered an asset. So they will count that $100,000 out, but they will count the next $1,000 as a resource. So the good news is that if your ABLE account balance causes you to exceed the normal SSI's resource limit, which is $100,000, your SSI benefits will be suspended it wouldn't it just will be suspended you will not become ineligible for SSI but you will be suspended so once your account balance drops back to 100,000 you can notify SSI SSA or SSI and then your benefits will resume so you have to keep an eye on it that it does not go over 100,000 so let's say you're going to withdraw this money money would Money you withdraw and use for housing expenses can also affect your SSI benefits. That's another thing you need to remember. Well, how? Okay. Let's say, um, okay, an example. You withdraw $800 for, from your ABLE account on June 3rd for rent. Do not pay rent on July 3rd because then you have an asset of $800. What you will do is you must pay that money to your landlord by June 30th. As long as you do not hold the housing fund over from one calendar month to the next, the funds will not affect your SSI benefits. So if you take money out, pay everything you need to pay within that month. Do not hold it over to the next month because it will affect your SSI benefits. Another benefit to the ABLE account is the ABLE card. The ABLE Visa prepaid card is a loadable prepaid debit card that is the, available to everyone with an ABLE account. The ABLE Visa card does not pull money directly from your ABLE account. Instead, you get to choose a specific amount of money to load onto your card. This way you can get better control of budgets and plan for your qualified disability expenses. So if you're the authorized legal representative for an individual with a disability, you will be issued the primary card. But you can also obtain a companion card for the beneficiary. The ABLE Visa Card discrete loading feature allows you to limit how much money your loved one can access at any given time. Remember, only ABLE account funds can be loaded onto your, onto your ABLE Visa Card. And that's to avoid able money with non-able money. Saving and investing. So saving and investing, it, you have, um, it's easy to deposit money online. I can deposit from my checking to Ramsey's ABLE account. So that's very easy. You can contribute up to $15,000 per year into your ABLE account, into your ABLE account. But if you're employed and you have a disability, you may also be able to contribute an additional, or up to an additional, $12,490 of your income. So in total, $27,490. So the $15,000 that's allowed annually, plus if you're disabled and you're working, you can add the additional $12,490. There are, also, there are also diverse choices. You can choose from five different investment options, including four mutual funds and one FDIC insured investment. So ABLE accounts are invested accounts, investment accounts. They're not bank accounts. Like any money you put in there is invested. That's why it's with banks like Fidelity and it's not a regular bank. So when you contribute the money to the ABLE account, your money is invested into different portfolios that they provide. So these, 
portfolios are the able investment options. So let's say you went to Fidelity, you decided you're going with them, you open the able account and they're going to ask you to pick an investment option. And if you're like me, once I got to that point, I got confused. I had to go back and do some more research to figure out what was going to go over there. So you will be shown all five options and you will assign a percentage to each option. This percentage tells them how you want your money allocated from your contributions. So for example, if you assign 100% the growth option, then every time you make a contribution, they're putting that money or that contribution, they invest 100% of it into growth option. You can choose multiple options. If you just don't want to do growth option and you want to do all five options, you can do that. But your total allocation must add up to 100%. So I'll put a, a example here that you see. You can put 50% growth, 25% moderate, 25% conservative, income zero, bank safe option zero, but it has to add up to 100%. So now we'll talk about the five different investment options you get to choose from once you decided okay i think i know what i'm gonna do so the five options you get confronted with the first one is a growth option the growth option it provides capital appreciation and some current income so the growth option it helps to maintain a 80 percent investment in corporate stocks and 20 percent in bonds so the growth option may be best suitable for investors with a long-term time horizon and for um, investors willing and able to accept more risk. I am willing and able to accept more risk. So that's why I picked that option. Then you have the moderate growth option. So the moderate growth option seeks to provide capital appreciation and a low to moderate level of current income. So they allocate their... Um, option into 60% inf is invested in corporate stocks and 40% invested in bonds. So the moderate growth option may be most suitable for investors with a intermediate term time horizon and for investors willing and able to accept risk. So the growth option is 80% stocks, 20% bond. The moderate option is 60% stocks, 40% bond. And now we have the conservative growth option. The conservative growth option seeks to provide current income and low to moderate capital appreciation. Their allocation is 40% investment in corporate stocks and 60% investment in bonds. The conservative growth option may be most suitable for investors with a short to intermediate term time horizon and for investors willing and able to accept some risk. Then we have the income option. The income option seeks to provide current income and some capital appreciation. So their allocation is 20% investment in corporate stocks and 80% investment in bonds. So the income option may be most suitable for investors with a short term horizon and for investors unwilling or unable to accept risk. Then there's the bank safe option. The bank safe option offers a conservative investment strategy and is designed to protect your principal investment. So this option invests 100% into funds that are FDIC insured. So the bank safe option is fully invested in a FDIC insured account, meaning that your investment is insured up to $250,000 by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So um, the bank safe option offers the lowest expected returns and the lowest expected risk. So there's no risk. You're, 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 they're not doing anything with your money basically. So now it's all about the flexible changes. You are allowed or you have the freedom to change your investment option twice every calendar year. So let's say January to June, you did the growth option and you're like, okay, I'm taking too much risk. Let me simmer it down because the risk is too high up there and I'll go with the um, income option just to play it safe where they do 20% stocks and 80% bond. 
you can do that but only twice a year and then 2023 you decide okay i'm going full growth again and then in the middle of the year i'll switch it up again you're allowed to do that twice a year so what are the qualified expenses of an able account you can use this money in your account to pay for any expense related to your disability not just medical expenses examples of things you can use your able account for are basic living expenses housing transportation education assistive technology especially that one my son has an assistive technology device and that thing costs seven thousand dollars yes so assistive technology employment training personal support services legal fees health and wellness financial management all of those are covered under qualified topics. Topics. What is the difference between the special need trust and the ABLE account? There are pros and cons. And I'm just going to discuss some pros and cons. So you see how they compare to one another. Yeah. So a pro. A person with a disability can set up his own account with his own money instead of relying on parents, grandparents, or court to establish a first party special need trust for him. A con, able accounts can only be established for the benefit of people who develop their disability before turning 26 years old. So by contrast, if a special need trust is established with funds from the trust beneficiary, it does not matter when the person developed the disability, but with the ABLE account, it has to be done before 26. Here's another pro. A person with disabilities can manage the funds in her own ABLE account, making the person less reliant and others for, on others for assistance and making it easier to access funds. Another con. Some people with disability can be taken advantage of if they have control of their own funds. If a special need trust was utilized to hold the funds, instead a trustee has a legal obligation to safeguard the funds. Another pro, funds, in, funds in an ABLE account grow tax-free and are not subject to tax restriction. So that's another pro for ABLE accounts. Yeah. Cons, contribution to ABLE accounts are limited to $15,000 per year and can hold up to $100,000 without hurting SSI or Medicaid beneficiary eligibilities. Here's another pro. ABLE accounts are theoretically easy to set up with a local financial institution. And then the con would be without the assistance of a special need planner, use of an ABLE account can seriously affect government assistance. Con, if there are funds remaining in the ABLE account upon the debt of the account beneficiary, they must first reimburse the government for Medicaid benefits received by the beneficiary. And then the remaining funds will have to pass through probate court in order to be transferred to the beneficiary's heirs. If a special need trust is used, instead of an ABLE account, there will be no probate and in the case of special need trust establishment with funds that don't belong to the beneficiary and there's no Medicaid payback because the special need trust was funded by mom, dad, grandma, whoever. But with an ABLE account, if you leave money behind, you have to pay back Medicaid. So as you can see, ABLE accounts will be use a useful tool in a variety of circumstances, but they are not the only or in some cases the best solution when a person with special needs wants to save money. So before setting up an ABLE account, talk with your special needs planner to determine if you are eligible to use one of these instruments, an ABLE account or a special need trust. So please seek advice from your special needs planner and also go to ablenrc.org for more information before you make a decision. So that's today's video. I just wanted to give you guys another subject to look at if you can afford to have a special needs trust. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, please post it in the community box. I will link it there below and I'll link the websites 
in the description below for the ablenrc.org. Thank you and see you in the next video. Bye.